All right, let's jump in, talk about Israel. So uh, as we know, Israel killed Sinwa yesterday. Good riddance. That was wonderful. It was good news. Um, uh, the Palestinians are flinging his uh, killing yesterday as he died heroically because he, you know, he, he was already injured. He was bleeding. He was everything. And he still managed to fling a, uh, a, a piece of wood at the drone that was filming him. They're pretty desperate. They'll take anything as a sign of life for the resistance. Uh, but it, yeah, it was, it, was a, it was a good day, and it's good to, to have one less evil bastard uh, off the face of the earth. But it doesn't solve anything. It, it doesn't solve much, right? It's, it's one more leader. Uh, Hamas can generate new leaders at incredible rates. Uh, evil is uh, kind of self-perpetuating in, 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 in disgusting ways, but it does. There are still thousands of Hamas fighters. There's still many young people in Gaza who would join Hamas as soon as they get to a certain age. There is a bunch of Hamas leaders in, um, in uh, Qatar really sitting on billions of dollars of personal wealth, but also billions of dollars they can spend on perpetuating this. And, and you know, it, it, it fairly, it's fairly disgusting, just as an aside here, it's fairly disgusting that the United States uh, sanctions Qatar's sanctioning of these Hamas uh, leaders in, in Qatar, that they allow them to keep their money. This is money that was donated through various agencies for the Palestinian people and has really landed up in all these uh, monsters' bank accounts. Um, and uh, it, it, we know that the billions given to uh, Hamas over the years have gone to weaponry and uh, weapon systems and tunnels and killing Israelis. And we, Israel, the United States, just allow that to continue to happen. Uh, Qatar should be boycotted. They should be. They should. They should have no voice in anything. They should uh, until they get rid of these people, or Israel should just, or America should just bomb the place in which these Hamas uh, uh, leadership reside in Qatar, I'm sure they know where they are. Just just get it over with. Just kill them all, all in one time. Uh, but that's not going to happen. So anyway, so we've, we've got them there. So in other words, Hamas is not finished. Hamas is still in existence. It's still there. Uh, for all I know, and I don't have updated data, the Palestinian people in Gaza still support Hamas. Uh, they're still behind Hamas. Uh, that hasn't changed. Israel still has to win the war. And, and winning the war means the complete devastation of Hamas so that they surrender, the release of the hostages, and the conviction among the Palestinian people that Hamas is not a good idea for them, that they need to rethink their leadership, they need to rethink their philosophy of life. That would be it, right? And Israel's still not there. It's not there. And uh, it still needs more, um, and it still needs... Now's a good time. Now's a good time. I mean, the Palestinians are down. Sinwa died. They lack leadership. Go in there with everything you've got. Now, I know they're fighting in the north, and they're about to fight in Iran. But go in with everything you can afford to go into. Go in there and, and, and try to destroy everything left of Hamas that you can identify. Biden, on the other hand, the president of the United States of America, commander of chief of the United States military, is suggesting to Israel to basically surrender. He's saying, okay, kill Sinwa, enough's enough. We need a deal. Let's have a peace deal. It's, it's done. It's all over. Come on, Israel, stop this. You don't have to go anymore. Let's just cut a deal with, with these guys. The war in Gaza is finished. Um, I know Biden has just been, uh, just been a shackle around Israel's desire for self-defense, just, 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 just holding them back constantly, giving bad advice, threatening them. Um, it, it, all he cares about is, uh, it, and, and you could ask, is this ideology or is this virtue signaling about Biden? But all he cares about, you know, humanitarian aid, humanitarian aid, is that going in? Let's feed Let's, let's make sure we feed and clothe and, and, and provide polio shots and everything else to the people who want to destroy your country and who want to kill all of you. That's what we should be doing. 
that is the United States of America's government. It's the State Department. It's Biden. And it's, I think, a lot of people. It's, it's not that it's not an unusual position. That is the position of most people out there. So uh, certainly the position of almost all Europeans and European governments. And it's just horrible, just horrible. So it's very difficult for Israel, even if we wanted to, to do what's necessary in this kind of international environment. And yet it has no choice because it's survival and its prosperity depend on it. So uh, Israel needs to deal with Hamas. It's still it got a way to go. It also needs to deal with Hezbollah. It has eviscerated its leadership ranks, uh, not just at the very top, but also at the, also at the local level in the south of Lebanon. It's probably killed about, according to their conservative estimates, about 1,500 Hezbollah operatives. But Hezbollah, Hezbollah is big. We're talking about tens of thousands of militants. Uh, we're talking about still tens of thousands of missiles. They're probably destroyed over half of the arsenal, but their arsenal was about 140,000. So they still have maybe 50,000 missiles. They've launched about 20, 50 left, maybe 40,000, maybe 20,000. That's a lot. There's still a lot of work to do in the north. And Israel's again doing it slowly. Now, again, it could be that the slow action is a consequence of just lack of troops, lack of resources. Uh, it's possible. Five Israeli soldiers died yesterday in Lebanon um, as a consequence of fighting with Hezbollah. So this is not without a cost. This is not easy. This is not a freebie. This requires boots on the ground, going from tunnel to tunnel, destroying them. But it, it, doing it very slow and systematic. It, there's no blitzkrieg here. Uh, you could argue that the the approach should be a blitzkrieg. I think they're worried that if they blitzkrieg would be just send the tanks in to run through to the Litani and then and then clean up operations behind you. The problem with that is I think they're worried about being ambushed. They're worried about uh, Hezbollah jumping out of tunnels. I, I, so they're going inch by inch by inch. They're going slowly, special ops, clearing operations, and, and they're slowly going kilometer by kilometer towards the north. This is going to take a long time at this pace. I think ultimately Israel is still hoping, I think this is a mistake, but I think Israel is still hoping for some kind of negotiated deal with Lebanon. They're still hoping to get Lebanon to a tipping point where the Lebanese army and the Lebanese people uh, rebel against Hezbollah. Hezbollah, of course, is, is Lebanese people, but the other Lebanese people rebel against the Hezbollah itself. Um, how, to, how, to really, uh, how to really tell um, it, whether that can happen and when that can happen, but it's, it's, it's still a way off. Lebanon is standing up to Iran for the first time in a long time, so there's a little bit of that going on. But there's still a lot that uh, the, the, um, the Lebanese, the, the Israelis are going to have to do to weaken Hezbollah there's still a lot more Hezbollah operatives that have to die. Still a lot more of their arsenal, of their, of their weapon systems that have to be destroyed before I think Israel, it, it, before the Lebanese have the guts to stand up to Hezbollah. So Israel still has a lot of work to do there, a lot of work to do there. And it better get on with doing it. Uh, it has cut a lot of the supply lanes from Iran into Hezbollah. So Iran is struggling to figure out what to do with Hezbollah. But uh, again, even there, still more work to be done. We talked about, I think, yesterday, the fact that Israel might be encircling Hezbollah by going through, uh, by going through uh, Syria. It's a little weird, the whole thing, because it's being telegraphed. If I know about it, suddenly the Iranians know about this plan. So what's up with that? And, and uh, if it's not a secret, can it still, can it still work? So that's going on. And then, uh, and then, of course, we're still waiting for what is going to happen with uh, the uh, Iranians. So uh, according to one report, there's, there's a report that uh, Israel is, is, is prepared now for major uh, strike on Iran. Um, so supposedly this is out of U.S. intelligence that uh, Israel has been preparing for the last few days for a large-scale strike on Iran. Uh, we're talking about ballistic missiles, air-launched ballistic missiles. 
um, that are called Golden Horizon and Rocks, um, and they've been they've been uh, preparing those and loading them up to airplanes and getting ready to use them and training on them. Um, uh, but also, um, but also. Uh, air, air, air to ground missiles, non-ballistic missiles, air to ground missiles, and uh, everything else. The, the the air force is is out in force. They've been practicing refueling exercises. Remember, Israel cannot get to Iran and back without refueling in the way on the way. So they are exercising refueling, and of course, refueling is is tricky because you're exposed when you're refueling uh, to ground to air missiles to to enemy aircraft supposedly. Uh, so Israel has to, you know, you have to be able to defend the, the, the refueling operation, uh, whether it's with airplanes or with missiles or with whatever. So it's, it's not, the whole thing is very tricky, very difficult, um, and, and I'm sure is getting some uh, U.S. aid. Uh, but Israel is preparing this large-scale, large-scale operation against Iranian military facilities. So it's pretty clear that Israel is not uh, is not going to strike nuclear facilities and is not going to strike the oil facilities of Iran. The focus is on military facilities. Indeed, uh, there's another story out. This one, uh, this is a report in the Times newspaper in the UK. Uh, and this report is claiming <coughs> that an indirect goal for the uh, Israeli attack on Iran, uh, a goal shared by the United States and Israel, um, is to encourage regime change, um, which I've been calling for for decades. Uh, but it, interesting to see if it's even possible from the, for, with only air operations. Uh, the strikes are expected to target the Iranian military, the Islamic Revolutionary Guard, Guard Corps, and the Basij military, paramilitary group. With the last two of these, being the primary forces behind the recent put-down of protests and civil unrest against the Iranian government. So the, the hope there is that if you weaken the Islamic Revolutionary Guard and you weaken the power military groups, that uh, the, the, there'll be more civil unrest, there'll be a real uprising in, in Iran, and they will, this will lead to regime change. Uh, Israeli officials are, again, stating who knows what this means, that they're planning to hit Iran really hard. Remember shock and awe? Shock and awe. I, I wasn't shocked or awed by shock and awe, but maybe this time I'll be surprised and, and we'll get a real shock and awe. Anyway, um, could it happen tonight? Uh, you know, what, what's the time now? It's uh, three something, so uh, in terms of Israel time, uh, that is... Um, what is that? Six hours ahead, uh, seven hours ahead. So we're talking about 10 p.m. If it's going to happen tonight, it's happening now. That is, the plane's on their way. Plane's on their way, or within the next couple of hours, they're taking off, and they're on their way. So we will know soon enough if um, if, if the, 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 it's it's there's a reality if this is really happening, and if it's happening if it's happening now. Um, if not tonight, tomorrow night, the night after that, I, I really don't know. I, 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 you know, at this point, I cannot predict timing on these things. Clearly, Israel is going to do something about Iran. They might be waiting. Uh, Biden was just in Europe. He probably got yelled at by his allies, so maybe he, he'll yell at Netanyahu. Uh, I, I don't know. Maybe America has to give the green light. Supposedly, Netanyahu has already gotten the green light. So who knows what the politics in the background of all of this are, but it does uh, it does appear as um, you know as uh, again that, that, that this uh, that this will happen in the next couple of days, and I've said that already. I don't know how many times, so I, I understand if you guys are frustrated by my inability to foresee the future with greater accuracy <laughs> than I am. I'm frustrated by it too. Um, other piece of news, again, I don't know. I don't think this has been verified. So this is, again, kind of on the scale of, of, of rumors. Um, Israel is expecting an Iranian response to whatever it does. And then it is expecting another response by Israel to what Iran does, a response that could be even harsher than what it does this time, and maybe at that point target 
uh, nuclear facilities. Anyway, because it's expecting a serious Iranian response to its attack now, Israel has asked the United States, you remember we, we, we already talked about the one TAD, TAD system, uh, 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 ground to air a defense system. Uh, they've asked the United States to station one of those systems in Israel, and that is a re uh, is stationed and supposedly should be operational, if not today, tomorrow, I mean, I imminently. But supposedly, Israel has now asked for a second system uh, to be operational in Israel. By the way, one of those systems, there were reports uh, of being, it was originally going to be in the south of Israel. It's going to be, now it's going to be in the north of Israel. Again, I don't know. Uh, but uh, now reports of a second such system uh, and a Patriot battery all uh, moved to Israel. So in addition to Israel's own Iron Dome and, and, uh, and Arrow uh, 2 and 3, um, and uh, now we're talking about adding to that significant uh, American resources. Uh, and I think the problem with the Israeli system is not inaccuracy, it's not, uh, you know, it, it, it's not success enough rates. I just think they don't have enough, enough capacity to deal with 200 ballistic missiles sent at them at once. And, and that's what they're trying to deal with. So that's where we are. Uh, of course, I will update you as soon as we get, you know, as soon as the whatever happens with Iran actually happens and we can analyze the actual consequences or, or, or the actual targets and what Israel has decided uh, to do, and I'll give you my assessment of that uh, once it actually uh, once it actually happens.